I just saw the Tupac movie. <laughs> Why did you do this to Pac? <laughs> Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy. I'm back. I'm doing a movie review today. You know, usually I do my toy hunting, some other stuff, some top tens or top fives or whatever. But today I thought I'd do a review on the Tupac movie because you guys know I'm a huge Tupac fan. Huge Tupac fan. Like, I bought all of his albums. All of them. So I thought I'd do a nice little review for you guys coming from somebody that is a huge Tupac and was alive during the 90s to, to actually watch a lot of this stuff unfold. So this is going to be my honest review. So bear with me, you know what I mean? So I'm going to give you guys the good, the bad, and the ugly on the Tupac Shakur movie, All Eyes on Me, starring Demetrius Ship Jr. Okay, guys. So this movie starts off with us uh, dealing with Pac, uh, where he's going to uh, Clinton Correctional Facilities. And so basically what it starts off with is Pox doing an interview with uh, this gentleman and telling him how we became who we became. Um, the intro starts with Pox getting out of the, the bus to go to uh, Clinton Correctional, which is really dope at the beginning because they do show um, Shed So Many Tears, which is one of my favorite Tupac songs. And it starts off with that. So as soon as you hear that, you're like, yeah, this is dope. And so it gets into the movie. And then you deal with all points of Pac's life where he talks about him struggling at the beginning, uh, his rise to fame when he, before he, he rose to fame actually. Uh, it deals with a little bit of him meeting Shock G and Money B of Digital Underground. And then jumps to uh, Pac recording uh, Tupacalypse Now. And then um, jumps forward and stuff like that too death row and everything else so this is going to be my honest opinion but uh, that's how it starts and then it, it concludes with Pac dying on Las Vegas and it gives a little back uh, you know tells you a little bit about how the, the murder of Tupac is still unsolved so that's how it starts off and that's how it basically ends now it's time to give you the good the bad the ugly all right, let's start with the good. The good, you know, like I said at the beginning, hearing the music of Shed So Many Tears, which was awesome, which is a great song in my book, was really, really dope to start it off. I'm not gonna lie, it was just really cool. Um, this movie is one of the most controversial movies right now, you know what I mean? You got people fighting on Instagram over this and Twitter and everything else. Snoop and everybody else, is, everybody has an opinion about this movie, but, Let's let's start this off with the good. What's good about this movie? Um, of course, the music. The music is always going to be great because you got all of Tupac classic music on here. You got California Love, Shed So Many Tears, I Get Around, Keep Your Head Up, Brenda's Got a Baby, and he shows him recording uh, Brenda's Got a Baby, which is pretty dope because it shows you how Pac was in the studio. That was pretty cool. Uh, another cool things about this movie was that. You get, you get to see a little bit into Pac's life. And there's certain points in this movie where Demetrius Ship does a fantastic job and you kind of get like, all right, cool. You know what I mean? You can singing and he's performing Pac songs and stuff like that. You're like, dang, this dude looks like Pac. Because if you're like me, you've seen the videos of Pac on stage or he's, you bought the House of Blues Tupac video where he's performing all of his classic hits. And you're going to be like, dang, this dude's moving like Pac. And, Certain spots on there, you're like, dang, this dude really does look like Pac. Um, another cool thing was, is I, I like the way that they showed um, the dynamic between Pac and his mom, because Pac, Pac's mom was really instrumental in Pac's upbringing, um, even though her dealing with drugs and stuff and so forth. So, um, I really dug that. Uh, also, I love the relationship that they had with Jada Pinky Smith and Pac. Because it showed that Jada Pinkett was really like Tupac's closest friend. And I know there's going to be some stuff about that, but I'll get that into later on in the video. Um, another cool thing was I, I liked the, 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 mother, the mother bond 
as well as the female bond that he has with Jada in there. I think the person that played Jada did a really fantastic job. Um, also, the one that played his mom, I can't remember her name. I'm so sorry if I can't remember her name, but she did a fantastic job playing the Phoenix Shakur. And then the chemistry between Jada and Demetrius or Tupac in the movie looked really good. You know, their chemistry really kind of blended together. Let's see. Oh, also they had the guy that played uh, Biggie in the Notorious movie rep reprise his role as Biggie Smalls in here, which was pretty cool, you know what I mean? Because so if you're familiar with the Notorious Big biopic, you, you see him and you're like, oh, okay, cool, you know what I mean? So it kind of kind of blends in pretty good, you know? Um, even though his scenes were short, and if you want to learn more about Biggie's biopic, you should check out the Notorious um, biopic. Um, I, I got stuff on that one too, but we'll save that for another time. I like that it touched on certain stuff that you wouldn't you wouldn't expect this movie to touch on, which was really cool. Like, you know, the Quad City, uh, the rape case, and everything else. It showed it from Pac's point of view on what happened, because none of us were there to find out what happened. So I like that it dealt with that, and it talked about that. I like his bond with Suge. It did show like a couple of different things about uh, Pac wanting to get off death row and start his new um, new thing, which was kind of weird because they did get a little, some of the information wrong, but that'll be coming up shortly. That'll be coming up shortly. Now time for the bad. There's so much bad in this movie. <laughs> coming from a Pac fan. Okay, if you're a Tupac fan like I am, then you're gonna catch on to this stuff like right away, dude. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation in this movie a lot of misinformation in this movie like a lot of this stuff is inaccurate and i know it's a biopic and they're gonna get stuff wrong and, and it's stuff to make like a better movie i understand that believe me i understand that but being a huge tupac fan i think that was my biggest mistake if i wasn't a tupac fan i could probably go in there with a different set of mind state where i could watch this movie and be like all right take it for what it is a movie um if you're a tupac fan like i am and you follow him from all of his albums and you watched all of his movies from Juice to everything else, you know, um, to Gridlock and gang related and everything else that Pac's been in. And you're gonna watch this uh, this movie and you're gonna be like, yo, that's inaccurate, that's wrong, that's wrong. Ugh, this is wrong, this is wrong. And the guy that plays Tupac, we gotta talk about this. Demetrius Ship. Demetrius Ship, um, he resembles Pac. Don't get me wrong. He resembles Pac here and there, you know, stuff like that. This is his first movie. And you can tell this is his first movie. No disrespect to Demetrius Ship, because I've been watching interviews with this guy. And from all of his interviews, he seemed like he's a genuine dude and a really awesome guy. And um, from all the stuff that I've seen on him, it, it, it's like, man, this dude is a really good dude. And he seems like somebody you would want to be friends with just from his personality and the way he is. But you can tell this is his first movie. <laughs> like, like legit, you can tell this is his first movie. Um, some of the parts that he's in, it's it seems kind of forced, you know what I mean? And stuff like that, and yeah, <laughs> that's all I can say about Demetrius Shipp. You know, there is certain parts on there where you watch him when he's dealing with Jada, the girl that plays Jada or dealing with his mom and you're like, man, that, that's, it, it starts getting kind of good because you see that dynamic, you know, but there's certain parts on there where you're just like, ah, ah, this is kind of clingy. Ugh. But, um, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it on that. Yeah, now it's time for the ugly. And believe me, there's a lot of ugly. This, there, there's more ugly than there is bad. Let's talk social media. It's cool to be trending on social media, uh, especially as me as a YouTuber. You want to be trendy, but when they're making fun of your movie, because of stupid mistakes, that's not good, bro. That's not not good at all. 
the ugly. Jada Pinkett Smith replied and said, her, her actions with Pac in this movie never happened. L.T. Hutton is the producer of this movie. He's pretty big, pretty, you know, pretty famous and stuff like that in the music industry. You couldn't call Jada up, get a little, you know, text message, yo, Jada, can we talk? Do, 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 do. You know, so, so we know what's going on. Get a little info from you and Pac. Yeah, you, you, you know, she knew him since he was a kid. You think you would want it up? Um, also, the stuff in here, like the movie itself, there's no other way to say this, but this movie seems like it, it's so, it's so pieced together that it's not even funny, dude. It's like, it jumps to so many things that you just can't keep track of. So by the time you're in, you're, you're, you can't get invested to anybody in this movie because how bad it jumps around. You know, I understand that Pac lived a, a crazy life and it's hard to get all of this stuff that you want to talk about Pac into a movie and keep it, you know, short. And that's another thing, this movie being two hours and some minutes long and still getting inaccurate, you know, and not being there. Not being like, it feels like a music video without the music on top of it. Like a lot of these scenes could have been taken away and getting more interaction with other stuff. And so you can see what's a part of his life. Part of a biopic is so we can see what was going on behind the scenes. You know, and the fact that we have so many YouTube videos on pot and him dealing with the outlaws who weren't really even talked about in this. I think he said at the very end, like, yeah, this is the outlaws. And that's it. You know, it, it doesn't say anything like about, you know, Napoleon Castro, Idi Amin, Fatal, uh, Yaki Gaddafi. It doesn't talk about that, you know what I mean? And it's crazy. And then it does a scene when he meets uh, uh, Mutulu Shakur in prison because he's, you know, he, he got sent away. And like, since I'm a fan of Tupac, I know who Mutulu Shakur is. So I knew exactly who he was playing. But if you're a new person and you're barely getting into this movie and you don't know anything other than what you've seen on YouTube, you're not gonna know who that is. You know, so like, it, it, it's, crazy to me on some of this stuff and how it's pieced together. No offense to Benny Boom. I respect him as a, a filmmaker and everything else. Like I respect everybody for for what they do, you know, especially they're so much higher than me and I'm just some dude in the garage filming a YouTube video right now talking about how much I hated the All Eyes on Me video, but I'm a Tupac fan. And that's who you guys were trying to get. You were trying to get me. Tupac has some of the most loyalist fans on this planet. Come on, dude. We bought all his all his music, merchandise. Look at me, dude. I have like five Tupac shirts. I bought Machiavelli shirts. You know what I mean? I bought the stupid bootlegs from the Jamaican dude in the corner at the swap meet. You know what I mean? I buy that stuff because it's Pac. And I feel this movie did Pac no justice. It. I couldn't get into the movie, and it's horrible for me as a Tupac fan not to be able to get into this movie when I love Tupac's music, dude. I've been into Tupac's music since freaking 94, 95, like, like right when he released Thug Life, when Pour Out A Little Liquor came out, I was just like, yo, this is my jam, and then my, my mom's song is Dear Mama, you know what I mean? So I've been dealing with, like, listening to Pac's music forever. You know, Thug, Thug Life, you know, I got that album. Dude, I bought all his albums. Like, all of his albums, dude. I have all of them. I got Tupacalypse. I got Strictly for my... I'm not going to say it. You know, got respect. Um, Thug Life. I got All Eyes on Me. I got Me Against... Dude, I have Me Against the World tattooed on my back. You know what I mean? I have Tupac tattoos on me, bro. And to watch this movie... And, and feel that like you totally you guys missed the mark on this it, it's it's amazing to me because like there's so many stories about Pac that you guys could have talked about in this movie but a lot of it they're dealing with the little scenes of him performing and stuff like that two three scenes with Jada like if you didn't know who Jada you know if you weren't around that time you're not gonna know who that girl he's talking to in the club after he gets done with the um the house of blues you're not gonna know who that is I know that's Jada because 
I remember that time. But if there are new people coming into this, you're not going to know who that is. And then another thing about this movie is, if you are coming into the Tupac movie expecting to get uh, Straight Outta Compton, which was a fantastic movie, my parents like Straight Outta Compton. My 60 year old boss likes Straight Outta Compton. You know what I mean? If you're coming into this movie expecting Straight Outta Compton, you are gonna to be totally disappointed. Um, looking at the, the rates that this movie has got, you know, I'm not the only one that's felt this way about the movie. I, I am so disappointed in this movie. You know what I mean? Um, I wish it was done better. I wish the script was better. Um, I wish everything about this movie was done better. And then they were talking about John Singleton. Now, that's another part of the ugliness. John Singleton um, said that he left it because he didn't like the way the movie came out. I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. But also, they were saying that the reason the, what happened with John Singleton is he got fired because he wanted to simulate that Tupac got raped in jail. And Tupac's talked about this. And then for him to do that is disrespectful to him. In fact, I feel this movie is disrespectful to Tupac and Afini Shakur. I feel this is very, very disrespectful, but I can't be mad at them because they're trying to make money off the Shakur family and it's feeding a lot of people, you know, and Edie I mean is was in the movie and uh, uh, Castro was in this movie which is really dope because you get to see two of the outlaws and if you're a Tupac fan, you're going to catch them right away. But still Napoleon and, uh, uh, wasn't in the movie. Uh, rest in peace, Fatal, because Fatal you know, passed away a while ago. If you're a Tupac fan, you already know that. And so it was, it was difficult to really get involved with this movie and, 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 and you know, but I, I'm just so lost for words, man. Like, I didn't like the movie. I knew I wasn't going to like the movie because I saw the trailer. No disrespect. I just didn't like the movie. And if you're coming into this movie expecting to get a bomb movie like uh, Straight Outta Compton, you're not going to get it. You're, not, you're really not going to get it. I didn't like the movie. And that's what I'm saying. Sorry if, if you know... Sorry to people that did like it, but I didn't like the movie. And I'm a Tupac fan, but we all have our own uh, um, views on stuff. So you might like the movie. I didn't. You know, I did not like the movie. But it did talk about a lot of stuff in Tupac's life. It did talk about the rape case. It did talk about him getting shot. It showed the, the, the one of the cool scenes that it did show was there was a part where Pac's walking out on the jail, uh, uh, like on the prison yard. And there's this dude listening to a boombox. I didn't know they could listen to boomboxes in prison. But whatever, he has like a full big old boombox. But anywho, so he's listening to uh, Who Shot You by Biggie. And Pac's listening to it, and he's all, yo, turn it up. So he turns it up, and he starts piecing together uh, about when he got shot. And stuff like that. Which I thought was a pretty cool scene. I don't know how accurate it is. I doubt it's very accurate. But it was a good scene. It was a good scene for the movie. Um, we talked about the rape case. Um, it showed it showed news clippings of Pac's many things with jail. It showed him shooting up two cops in Atlanta. It showed all that stuff. It showed the real footage of the night that he he beat up Orlando Brown, um, aka Baby Lane, in the MGM when they, after they got out of the Tyson fight. They showed the real footage on that, which was maybe disrespectful I don't know that's just my point of view like you guys are different I'm my different so a little disrespectful I saw it on that um, but it didn't show like it showed Pac having money issues it showed Pac trying to start a, a, a label and wanting to get off the of death row I've heard rumors about that but there's so many rumors to contradict that one so it was just really really crazy and then it showed that that's why Pac was starting uh, um, uh, Death Row East and he was going to be partners with Suge and then Ethanasia, I think it's his record label. I can never, I can never pr pronounce it. I know the name of it, but I can never pronounce it. So I talked about that, that he wanted to start that record company. That's not a record company. That was actually uh, movies 
and TV and stuff like that. His actual record company that he was going to start was Machiavelli Records, which was going to be distributed through Death Row Records. And the infamous Honey So, with that being said, I'm gonna rate this movie one out of five fire flames. I didn't like it. I don't re recommend it. To me, it's a lifetime movie. It's on the same wavelength as the Aaliyah one. So you could take you you know you could watch it. See you know you might have a different opinion, but that's my opinion on the Tupac movie. And I'm gonna let you guys go because I don't want to keep this one long. I just want to keep it nice, short, and quick to the punch. So I want to thank you guys for watching this for the good, the bad, and the ugly. I will eventually want to do more of these. And then the wife said she wanted to do movies with me, movie reviews. So we're gonna start doing movie reviews together. Um, so I thank you guys for watching the video. Uh, please subscribe, like, comment, follow me on all my Instagram, my Snapchat, my Twitter, and all that stuff like that. Keep in contact with me. Just let me know how you guys feel about the Tupac movie. Um, so, I just want to tell you guys, love, peace, and talk with Grease. All eyes on me.